The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to Jesus, he spoke a parable. A sower went out to sow seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled. Birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it proclaimed and produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. So Jesus answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see and hear but not understand. He continued, This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard it, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word of God with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among the thorns, They are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Now this chapel has no mic, so can you hear me back there? Okay. You know, uh, when I was in the eighth grade, um, there were two kids in class, Holy Rosary, Jersey City, by the way. Um, There were two kids in class that were vying for valedictorian. One was me, and one was Barbara Jane. Now, Barbara Jane had like one or two points more than I did. So Sister Grace Politoto comes over to me and says, Louie, at that time the church didn't have microphones. She says, Louie, she says, Louie, I want you to be the valedictorian. And she says, and don't get so excited. Barbara Jane has better grades than you. You only a, a point or two under her, but she has better grades. But you have a bigger mouth. <laughs> Perciò. So that's how I became valedictorian. <laughs> Sister Grace Polizotto. Wonderful memories. I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about the affiliates and what you do, but I'm here. This is my roots. Are you kidding me? I've got to talk a little bit about us. If my mother were alive, she would be an affiliate, right? And, and um, you know that. Pat knows that. Pat Ranieri knows that. Pat, uh, tell me, she, you were in my mother's Girl Scouts group, okay? And they were all neighbors from 4th Street and 5th Street, Brunswick Street, Jersey Avenue, all that area. And I know that if she were living, she'd be here as an affiliate because she was involved with everything to do with Jersey City. She was involved with the card parties, the, the, or any kind of organization, the volunteers. She was involved with my brother's high school, our grammar school. And when I went to St. Michael's, even there, she was always involved. And she was the first person to do charity. There was, we were a close-knit neighborhood, black, white, we're all mixed together. And if there was an accident on, on the neighborhood or a house had a fire, she'd be the first one to be collecting clothes and to c- be collecting food 
and, and, and they used to call her the, the mayor of downtown. She wasn't the mayor. <laughs> if she worked as much as she, f financially, if she worked for money as much as she worked for charity, we would have been a rich family. But we were a rich family. I could think of her wall in the living room, and there were plaques after plaques after plaques, the, the kind of charity she did. She, she worked with the Catholic war veterans. None of my family were war veterans. My uncles were, but she joined the Catholic War Veterans. She worked the St. Anthony Society, the Rosary Altar Society, the mailing committee. You get the idea. And how appropriate that I'm invited here. First of all, I'm ordained over 40 years. This is the first invitation I got to the Villa Walsh <laughs> to say, thank you. <laughs> tell her, tell her. <laughs> when... <laughs> When Pat called me up and said, you know, how, you, how we know each other and so on, and she said, would you consider, I didn't have my calendar in front of me. She says, would you consider saying Mass at Villa Walls? I said, yes. <laughs> she said, do you know what it's for? It doesn't matter. Yes. I said, because if you want me to say Mass at Villa Walsh, and I said no, there were two people in heaven that would kick my butt. <laughs> One was my mother, my mother, Rose. She said, oh, no, you're doing it. And I wore this vestment today because that's one of the last ones she made for me. And the other person would have been Tommy Donato, my dear friend, parishioner, Bishop Tommy Donato. He would have been kicking my butt, too, because he watched over me all the time. Little story about Tommy Donato, and then we'll talk about the scriptures. So I, I was in high school and grammar school, but an altar boy, Holy Rosary. Tommy and his cousin were in seminary, you know, divinity school, then seminary. But they would come in Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to help out at the parish. And those days, all the altar boys had big red bows for Christmas Eve. And I can remember, I, he, he, he had a very serious faith. He wasn't, he was serious, but he wasn't harsh. But he always had a very serious face, so I would stand up in front of him. And he tied the bow, and how's that feel? Fine, fine, I think we called him Mr. I don't know what the, the titles were. Fine, fine, okay. Go over there and don't move because we don't want to spoil that bow. He did that for 30 guys, so all lined up. And we all stood like little soldiers carrying the candle. That was Tommy, as I remember him, in the neighborhood. He, he was, his family was four, four blocks away from us. So when I said yes, and I sat with Sister, uh, with Pat and Sister Lucy and Sister Dolores to find out more about what you guys do, I, I was overwhelmed and with happiness, to be able to know that you are carrying on the work of the Maestre from 300 years ago, that you are doing exactly what Lucy Filippini was doing with her sisters how many years ago near Montefiscone. And to know that you were doing that w was a special gift for me. So then Sister sends me the readings. Now, the, the readings, if I were planning the Mass, I didn't plan it, I would choose special readings, but Sister chose the readings of the day. That's what you heard, and that beautiful parable of, of the sower and the seed. And I said to myself, I didn't know if she, she just chose the reading of the day, and I said, oh, I'm not going to talk about the seeds and the, these women and the work they do. And, and then I read the life of St. Lucy, and read some of her quotes, and I knew that God chose these readings for this day for these people, for you and for me, to be witnesses to all the conflict that you will have and you have had doing the ministry that you've chosen to do. Yeah, you've met the people with the hard hearts. You, you met the bella figura, the one who say, yeah, 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 and then don't do anything. You, you, you've met them all, right? You've met those who, who when the, the word goes on the ground, it gets trampled because they couldn't care less about you, Jesus, St. Lucy, or anybody else. But then God does something. He makes you the fertile ground. And I think of, of uh, Cardinal Barberini calling the sisters of St. Lucy the rain that will nurture the church, that give it fertility. You people, the new associates or affiliates and the, those who, are, who have been here for a while, and who would I meet? You, how many years? 50 years? How many? 30? Oh, there it is. It might as well be 50. <laughs> What's your name? I'm sorry. Rose. Rose. Oh, it's my mother's name. Good name. Good name. 
the work that you have been doing and the work that you continue to do carries on the faith that Lucy had. She was in love with Jesus. I mean, she had a connection with Jesus and God the Father, bar none. And she always came to Jesus with faith. And she came because she wasn't worried about Lucy. She was worried about the people that Lucy were teaching and working with, her associates, even the other <laughs> She always came to Jesus with faith because she knew her love affair with Jesus was perfect. And the ministry that she undertook, it, it, it's like post-Vatican II ministry. It's 21st century ministry. Going into the homes of, of the ill, going, taking care of the orphans, teaching the girls. It was chauvinistic, of course, but it was from the peerage, teaching all the domestic qualities and domestic chores that the women at that time needed to know. But God bless them because that was the only way to build who they were and the characters that she gave those women. And the Holy Spirit continued to work with her through her life and continues to work with you as you, as you throw your seeds into, into the world. The seeds that, that mean the gospel, the seeds that mean love, the seeds that mean nurturing, they're in your hands. I'm speaking specifically to the affiliates, the associates, but also to the religious, the, the sisters, because they know those seeds have been in their hands for so many generations, so many hundreds of years. And not every seed flourished a hundredfold, but those that did are here now. Those that did celebrate our faith in the universal church because the seeds were God's word. And that's hard to take. God's word is not pleasant all the time. Oh, we have all the love stuff, the faith stuff, the charity stuff. You have all that. But you also have the justice stuff. You also have the, the fact that we have to regard each other as equals before God. We have the challenge of Jesus Christ to love the poor, those that don't look lovable, to love those who are outsiders, to love, as she did, the prostitutes, to love those who were incapable of self-love and you know that you're repeating Lucia Filippini's ministry as you love the children who are tutored, the children who are taken care of in the pastoral centers, those who are taught, the elderly that you care for. You know that it's God's love coming through you. Don't ever look for a reward. Don't look for, oh, she wasn't grateful that I went. It would be nice if everybody we served was grateful. It would be very nice, but that's not what it's all about. That's what it's all about, the cross. And through the cross, he comes on earth, embraces it, gives us a, a, a flow of life right from the Father, and achieves resurrection. So every seed that looks crowded by the thorns, choked by society, distracted by the, the cares of the world, all those seeds that look that way, don't worry about it. You just nurture them. You just keep going on. You just keep imitating Lucy and, of course, Jesus Christ, who was her guide and her role model. You just keep going that way the way you're going because that's the only way we're going to achieve the cross. You will get that and the resurrection. And the resurrection is our connection to the Father eternally. The resurrection assures that you're not sitting in these benches alone. Jesus is right there next to each one of us. That's the resurrection. That when you're throwing a seed, whether it's to one little kid who, who's a, I taught high school, I taught grammar school, I taught a lot, and I got my, all my, my, my lessons from Lucy and from the, the Philippine Sisters of Holy Rosary. I loved teaching. I, I, I used to go to the most ornery kids, and they would be the ones I would focus in on. I didn't know why. Of course, I told that to Grace once, to Grace once, and she says, because you were one of them. <laughs> <clears throat> 
And then she reminded me of the story. I got you have time? We're not in a rush, sorry. Then she reminded me of the story of Sister Pasqualina. Master Tenta, right? She was my seventh, she's a redhead. She's my seventh grade teacher. Liked her, she liked me, but she was strict. And one day I was doing something outside. I was a patrol boy. I was doing something wrong outside. God forbid. And she saw me. She said, Skirty, upstairs to the, to the classroom. Now, the problem is, like I said, my mother was very involved with the parish. My mother would pick me up 3.05 every day outside of school, side door, 7th, 7th Street. And then we'd go across the street to my grandmother's house and have our biscotti and our espresso. And that kept, kept the ADD kid going for the rest of the day. <laughs> so one day, she comes up, and Sister Pasqualina, and it was a long classroom. There was a door here and a door there. And she says, you were, you were I don't know what you were doing with that kid. You, you were throwing that plane. It was a little world of gig plane. I said, no, no, no. Oh, I, right to her eyes, I lied. I said, no, 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 sir, I wasn't doing that. Oh, yeah, you were doing that. I saw it. No, 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 sister, because then yeah, I could have lost my badge, you know? And she says, if you say no once more, I'm going to smack you. Now, no one had ever smacked me. I mean, not even my parents, but they threatened. The problem is I'm a Sicilian son. My mother's coming in this door. Well, Pasqualina's hand is going to my face at that door. I can't, I'm in church, so I can't say what my mother said. She said, you, blah, 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 blah. And she started running after Pasqualina, who ran out the classroom door. I ran after my mother. I, I was like the Keystone Cops. And we're running, running, running. Until we get around to the convent. That's around the whole school. My mother's running. I'm going to beat the every, every, out of you. OK. She gets in. She opens the car. Goes, and my mother's pounding on the door. And Grace could tell you this. I mean, she's in heaven, but she could tell you this. Grace comes out. She was the superior. And she says, Rose, what's, what's the matter? Bring Pasqualina out here. I'm going to rip the veil off her head and beat her up. She, so my, she says to Rose, Rose, why are you going to rip the veil off her head? Sister, you've got to respect the veil. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then she made reconciliation between Pasqualina, me, my mother, and Pasqualina became, again, one of our best friends. So I was always a little problem child in school. <laughs> but, but they knew how to handle me. Sisters, the sisters knew how to handle me. They knew how to use my creativity. I remember Sister, Dar Sister Grace still had in her files the Stations of the Cross that I painted during the classroom, during Lent, because it was the only way to keep my hands from making trouble. So she said, okay, Louis, you go paint the Stations of the Cross. Now that's pedagogy, that's teaching, that's knowing and understanding the child. And that's what many of you sisters, my sister, have already done, and many of you affiliates are doing now. The people that we're meant to serve are God's people. They're God's people. So everything we do for the least of his brothers and sisters, we're doing for him. We need to continue planting the seeds. We need to grow with the seeds and give glory to St. Lucy, who gave us such an inspiration, and of course, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, we gather today to celebrate commitment. The following women have chosen to follow Jesus as associates of St. Lucy Filipino. <laughs> Receive the gifts and intentions of your servants, Lord, and confirm in your love those who profess to follow St. Lucy as affiliates and maestre, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Having received with reverence the divine mysteries, we humbly beseech you, Lord, to inflame each of us with the fire of the Holy Spirit and bless these servants who continue the ministry of St. Lucy Filippini, bound to you now by an act of sacred offering 
and to admit them forever in the company of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord look upon us with kindness and give us his peace. Amen. May he set his word in our hearts and fill us with lasting joy. Amen. May he inspire every one of us to follow the example of St. Lucy Filippini and give witness to the truth before all people. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's live in peace, loving and serving the Lord and each other. And have a good day. Mm -hmm.